If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. Okay. There, there are like you know two or three questions. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Please ask. We can we can uh, yeah. do those and uh, we can start the session. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Um. So one one is clarification, like you know, when the MDG, uh, when there is MDG hub or co-deployment, whatever it is. Uh, where the master data gets created and then it stores in the staging tables, correct? Yeah. And then, uh, and then once it is, it gets approved, then it gets stored in the active tables of the ECC. And when, um, when the data gets replicated to the target system, so the data gets moved from the active area, correct? The, yes, because it's approved and then it stores in the active. Okay, that was uh, that. I just want to co get confirmed on that, and and then also. You mentioned like, you know, the data gets saved in, um, based on the scenario, it gets saved in a one, two or multiple staging tables when the data gets uh, like, you know, created or before approving in mm -hmm. the uh, staging area. How do we know where this, what is the staging table that it gets saved? Yeah, so that we will discuss today. I'll show you that how we can actually look at the data in the staging tables. Okay, awesome, thank you. and. Uh, uh, the, the the last one is in the last session you mentioned like you know we can control the governance of the attributes um, like for example if there are like hundred attributes available in uh, one of the master data we can only govern like sixty of them and forty of them we can just leave as is um, uh, make it as a read only or something you mentioned right so yeah. how do we do that uh, is it a configuration. It's uh, yeah. that is available yeah there's a configuration available uh, where we can actually uh, uh, take it out of that governance scope some of the attributes so we will that will we will discuss under the process modeling configuration where we will be discussing the actual governance process awesome thank you very much it's the yeah, configuration sure. activity we'll reach out there i mean now uh, when we when we discuss about the process modeling topic okay sure thank you very much okay great any other questions from anyone else Great. If no questions, let's uh, uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, the data model uh, topic. So this is the first topic in our course after uh, uh, having that uh, the understanding of uh, the basics of MDG overview architecture and the deployment options. The first topic is the data model. Okay. So <clears throat> before getting so in this data model topic, so we all know in MDG we have two set of uh, uh, tables. So this is my MDG system. So in MDG system, so this is the uh, S4 or ECC component. Okay. So after that, here this is my MDG layer. Now we discussed as part of the MDG, we are getting something called staging layer, staging database. As we also, because it's an ECC or uh, your ERP system, by default, you will have the standard SAP tables. Uh, we, which we call it as an uh, active tables. Okay, so this we call it as an active tables. So this one, these are the active tables, and these are the inactive tables or staging tables. Okay, so all the changes that you are doing uh, as part of your via MDG processes, initially the data gets loaded into your staging table. Once the process is completed and the record got approved, then the changes will be moved to your underlying uh, this particular ECC table. Okay, or your active area table. So this is what we discussed till now. Okay, so our data model topic completely deals with your staging area. How your staging area look like? All the uh, the configurations related to the staging tables. Okay, so now there are two concepts when it comes to this particular staging table. We have two two concepts. One concept we call it as a reuse mode. Okay, other one is flex mode flex mode okay so what is reuse mode whatever we discussed till now as part of this particular staging table uh, concept that means a user will log into mdg system he will open a particular ui application or he will search the master data and he wants to create a new master or he wants to edit an existing master okay so in this case the data gets loaded into your staging table if it is an update scenario the data will actually pull into your staging tables 
and then the uh, uh, user can actually update on provide his updates on the staging record we call this as a inactive record okay so now all the changes will be happened on your staging record so requester will uh, log in and he will do the changes after that uh, you will have something called uh, uh, approver then once you submit the request it will go to the approver and approver will review the data and he will submit and it will go to for example steward and steward finally will take a decision whether he can approve the or reject the record once he approve the record what happens the steward uh, approves the record that is a final approver the record will be moved from your staging table to active area okay so the record will get deleted in your staging table you don't find that record in case of this process gets successful so then what happens is your record will be moved to your underlying active area table and uh, then the record will get deleted from your staging table this concept we call it as a reuse mode okay so here uh, if you look at your underlying uh, ecc table this particular uh, ecc table underlying ecc table okay so this is not part of your mdg these are already there in any sap erp system like your mara or example uh, marci or if it is for vendor it will be like lfa1 so likewise we have let's say for customer kna1 and uh, for uh, business partners but triple zero so likewise we have by default a bunch of act these tables are already there as part of your erp layer or your s4 system okay so now in mdg system because my mdg i will always activate the mdg component on top of my existing erp system so by default i'll have these tables in my uh, mdg system and these tables i am reusing to store my active records that's why we call it as a reuse mode so once your changes are completed and the active records always gets stored into your uh, uh, this uh, uh, active area tables active area tables are nothing but uh, the tables that we are talking over here only okay so the active records always get stored over here so we i'm reusing this sap or M sap reusing your uh, the standard uh, but default tables that comes as part of your erp layer to store your active records so that's why we call it as a reuse mode okay now we have different master data in mdg like material master business partner then uh, uh, your article master then em objects enterprise asset management masters so these are the out of box objects which are already available as part of our mdg solutions okay so all these four objects are always developed based on this kind of reuse mode technique that means if i am creating a material initially the material record gets stored into here my staging table once the steward approves this record or once the record gets activated the active record will be stored in my active area table and the record that exists in my staging area will be deleted okay so this the same approach will be followed for material master business partner article master and em objects so if you are creating any of these objects or if you are updating any of mo modifying any of these objects or if you are extending any of these records then what happens your data will be stored into uh, your staging area once the record get approved or, or activated the active record will be stored in your ecc table so there is, you don't find any active record in your staging table okay so this concept we call it as a reuse mode now what is flex mode okay so flex mode is basically what happens is initially let me show you here okay so this is my mdg system staging area active tables mdg layer this is my erp layer okay so now initially when user log into uh, mdg system and he wants to create for example uh, some master data it can be cost center profit center any object okay so the data initially gets stored into your staging table okay after that we call this record as a inactive record inactive record it is not at active for consumption purpose for any transactional activities 
after that steward it will go for the workflow process approver reviewer and steward finally the record will get activated at the time of activation what happens is this particular active record unlike your reuse mode it won't flow into your underlying erp so the same existing inactive record will turn into active record and it will stay in uh, your staging table only so that means your staging in the staging table itself initial it stores your inactive record after that the same inactive record will be turned to active record so you will have only one copy of data whether it will be an inactive record or it will be an active record okay so that means always your staging tables are flexible enough to store your uh, inactive as well as active records so that's why we call it as a flex mode flex mode these are the two important concepts when it comes to data model the reuse mode versus flex mode reuse so you mode. said that data will be in an active state in the staging table itself yep that's true that's true okay so in case of reuse mode always remember that your active tables or uh, your uh, erp tables or your active tables will contain the active uh, records and staging table will only use to store your staging records whereas in case of flex mode same staging table initially the inactive record will be there once the changes are finalized the same inactive record will turn into active record and that active record will be still there in your staging record only okay so this so, is about flex mode yeah so which means that when a user is searching for a record or going to make a change Mm. so the data since the data is already there in that uh, mdg uh, database so it will be loaded from the active to the inactive it will make the active to inactive right that's true exactly so that's the right understanding so initially the record will be there in your staging table on active record and when you try to when you get into an edit mode of that ui application when you try to edit and once you Click hit on save button or submit button. Then the active record will turn into inactive record. How I will recognize whether this record is an active record or whether it's an inactive record? So for every record, you will have a kind of indicator. That indicator we call it as I mean USMD underscore active active indicator. If the active indicator value is zero, that means it's an inactive record. After your uh, data uh, gets approved and uh, uh, finally activated, so the inactive record will turn into active record. That means the indicator value will change from zero to one. Okay, so that means it's an active record. This is an inactive record. Okay, now we'll come back to why SAP introduced this uh, flex mode because reuse mode makes sense for us uh, because uh, I'm using the staging area only for the temporary purpose and once my changes are done, I wanted to move the trigger to active area. So it's perfectly makes sense for us in uh, the reuse mode. Okay, now why SAP actually again brought this kind of flex mode concept that we will see. Okay, but first you understand that what is this flex mode? What is the difference between these two things? So your record won't automatically move to underlying thing. You need okay in case of reuse mode. Yeah. Actually, before you proceed. So in the case, if it is a brand new record, which is so, uh, there will not be so, which means that there will not be any possibility that there will be a record which is present in ERB is not available in MDG, right? So always all the records which is there in the underlying S4 will be there in the uh, active area of the MDG. Is that correct? Mm, uh, can you because come on? Yes, yeah, so there will not be a case where, uh, I mean, like, okay, uh, let me put it in this way. So the, is it right to say that active, the records in the active area is in sync with the ER, underlying ERP table? Yeah, it should be in, in sync. Ideally, that is what the general behavior, because let's say, for example, you have 100 records over here. Ideally, the, in the general case, you will also have the same 100 records over here. Okay, how I will get these 100 records into my this particular area, because in case of reuse, it automatically happens, it will move that record. But in case of flex mode, you need to, it is your responsibility to sub, uh, you, which you need to actually move the record to the underlying uh, active area tables as well. That is a separate process. Okay, so let me uh, uh, again show you in a separate one. Usually what happens in your normal case, okay, so this is your mdg system and this is your ecc system or uh, s4 system
okay so now usually you have a target system over here let's say for example and one more target system over here target one and target two so this is your staging area this is your active area now what happens in normal case in case of reuse mode reuse mode so initially the record will get created over here let's say for example material one and after that after the activation process the same material one will get removed from here and uh, the same material will get created here now from here the data will be replicated to the target systems the same material m1 and m1 okay yes. so this is the reuse mode now let's take example of flex mode in case of flex mode what happens as per our discussion let's take i'm taking example of cost center so initially cost center will be here cc1 and after that the same cost center will get activated and the active record will be available only in this staging record it is not actually not at move to your underlying ecc okay so your replication always in this scenario in case of flex mode your replication always takes place from your staging table the active record from the staging table so system will take this record and by default if you configure any data replication so the data will be moved from here to here your cost center one cost center one okay now in the same way i also need to manually replicate uh, this manual in the sense how you are replicating to the target systems in the same way you also need to configure your replication process in such a way such a way that it's a we call it as a self replication to the same active area of the same system separately you need to configure over here that means this is my replication one and this is my replication configuration two and this is my replication configuration three so i need to configure three replications uh, uh, to two target systems one is an additional extra to the we call it as a self replication to the same system because it won't automatically move to your underlying ecc layer in case of flex mode i'm talking okay so there is an additional replication required if you are using the reuse mode it automatically your material one automatically moves over here once the approval process is done so you no need to separately configure a replication in case of reuse but in case of flex you need to configure that replication actually it's an optional whether you need it or not but you raised one point that uh, the data has to be sync always in both the cases right to to have that kind of uh, synchronization between your staging uh, and uh, active area tables for your active records then you need to have this replication additionally you need to configure this replication one time replication so that if you have 100 records 100 records also pushed to here and even the same 100 records will be available here same hundred records will be available here as well. So Akshay, this case is ah. applicable for even the hub deployment, right? Even though the yeah, yeah. Yeah. ECC is not a transactional system, we need to uh, keep that in synchronization with the transaction systems because even though in flex mode, I'm talking, even though we are not using, there is an active area available in the MDG itself. So we can utilize that for even uh, the replication or for other search database search because for search it can uh, uh, get the results from the active and inactive in the mdg itself right so why do we need to make it synchronization the ecc system yeah. for hub deployment good good question okay so now let's say for example your question is okay i already have my active records here then why i need and even when i search this i will get that from this active records from my staging table itself in case of flex mode okay why i need to do a synchronization over here that's why i said it's an optional process okay whether you configure it or not maybe if you don't want it to configure then you don't have this uh, database your this database doesn't have your 100 records okay but in the real time in the practical the challenges that we uh, face are uh, 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 with this uh, not configuring he uh, the uh, data to the same system because what happens is uh, I have, if I don't have this record, maybe I can view this particular uh, 100 records from by logging into MDG UI applications. But if I, if at all I go to a cost center, the SAP, uh, the transaction code uh, using uh, your uh, uh, GUI transaction code, right? Because the tables are not get updated. And if I use the GUI uh, transaction code to look at a cost center or profit center or any, uh, or any the flex master data, I don't find that because your GUI transactions always pull the data from your active area tables, not from your staging. From MDG, I'm fine. From MDG point of view, it sets the data from my staging tables. 
and you display the records as well. But if someone wants to view the data in your uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, layer at this particular layer, then what happens because the database table doesn't have those records, then you cannot view any of those records by using your GUI transactions. I got it. So another question is when you are doing this in the flex mode, I'm talking about mm -hmm. there are um, active and inactive data itself, right? So they both store in different tables. Uh, am I right? For no, example, when it is no, it's a same table. There is no okay. actually uh, separate uh, staging table for active and separate staging for uh, this one. Uh, because if you look at, I'll show you the slide. If you look at that slide, it gives you an impression that it it is two separate tables, but that is not true. Actually, in SAP diagrams, initially they come up with that one, but later they corrected it and they're showing it's only one single DB only. I'll come back to that point when, when we go through yeah. the slides. So you mentioned that we uh, identify those records based on the indicator, whether indicator. it is zero or one. Okay. That's true. Okay. That's true. So okay. and another, sorry, sorry, too many questions. Another thing you mentioned, while mentioning about reuse mode, you use the example of material, mm -hmm. but whereas while using the flex mode, you use the example of cost center. So that means only in flex mode, we can use it in finance, uh, master data. Yeah, that's a uh, yeah, good observation. Uh, but if you look at that's true, uh, but okay. So out of box objects, all these are the four objects that users reuse. And only as of now, the out of box object like a finance objects uses flex mode. There is a reason. So we'll discuss that one, but uh, your observation is right. Only finance objects basically by default, uh, it uses the flex mode option. Whereas all other except finance, all other standard out of box objects uses always reuse mode and this behavior we cannot change it that means for example material master if you take it all it designed in such a way that it has to use the reuse mode technique so you cannot actually switch back to flex mode or bp or article master or uh, em objects similarly your finance objects as on today it is using flex mode but sap is already started working on they can they wanted to bring this uh, finance also into reuse mode but uh, 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 that is, I mean, actually as the future uh, uh, releases, but as of now, till today in the latest version, it's, it uses the flex mode only. So in that scenario, we can have reuse mode and flex mode together uh, in our implementation because we might be using the MDG for uh, several modules, correct? Mm, uh, so for, if you are using finance, it always uses flex mode only. You cannot change okay. that to reuse. Okay, if you are using so, these objects, it will be uh, uh, mode only. So when I say that MD... the objects, yeah, it will be both reuse and flex, right, Akshay? Yeah, yeah. So in 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 the system, you can have both. Though. You can have MM, you can have BP, you can have Article Master, you can have EM, even you can have Finance. All masters you can actually activate it at one time. So in that case, it we will be using both the modes of uh, later. Yeah, modes. I mean, I mean yeah, the if I'm creating flex, material. Correct? If I'm creating mm -hmm. material, it uses uh -huh. reuse mode. If I'm creating finance cost center, it uses flex mode. So, so actually, okay. the question question is: Does the system allow you to change the MM or BP or AR or EAM from reuse? By default, it is a reuse, right? And from the standard part, right? Yes. yes. Does the system allow you to change any of these two flex? No. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You cannot. It is by default. By default, it is the, that is the standard, right? So yes, that is there. So it is only the option is with a custom data model where you can either go with the reuse or the flex based on the use case. That's true, exactly. So this is the standard object situation, but when it comes to custom uh, uh, model or custom object, okay, let's say for example, employee master or W base element or any plant master. Okay, so when you take any custom data model, it's up to you depends on the need whether you wanted to go with the reuse or you wanted to go with the flex mode so in what cases i go for reuse in what cases i go for a flex mode that i'll explain more in more detail we'll discuss so once if you understand the concept of these two things then we can get into more details you have one question over here for the concept in the flex mode here the usage of this active uh, sorry this uh, ecc table is uh, is it right that whenever we have some developments which is carried out on this MDG space, right? And during that, are those development using this table or the active area over here? 
Okay. So when you're uh, uh, actually what happens is in MDG, we don't actually refer always whether I wanted to read the data from uh, staging table or I wanted to read the record from activated table that we don't directly refer this one. Okay. What happens is there are certain APIs are available. Okay. okay. In MDG technically we have one topic uh, APIs. So mm -hmm. probably uh, that will be towards uh, uh, last. Okay. Here I'll be explaining in more detail, but uh, since to answer your question, uh, I always read this particular i always use this particular apis to read okay. the data now while reading the data using this api this api has that feature that whether first it will look into the staging record if there is any staging record it will fetch the staging record if there is no staging record exist for that particular material or for that power or profit center or anything then it will always look into your active area table and it will read that one so there are different modes are there when i'm calling this api there are different modes are there the default mode will be read always first staging area if not then go for an active area that is one mode that is zero mode. and there is again another mode one is there it is always reads the staging records only though there is there is, it won't read active records and there is one more mode is there which always reads the active records only not the staging records so there are multiple options are there we'll go through this one but uh, in mdg terminology we ever never directly query your uh, the staging tables okay. okay because those staging tables are automatically generated so you we cannot actually know that basically the name of the table if you ask me what is my material master table mara marc mbk mbw that we know that is your ERP tables. But when it comes to MDG side, the table names are automatically generated and it cannot be actually in a readable format. So that's why we never ever we query directly the staging table. Instead of that one, we use these APIs. So, so this API will be reading the data from the staging table. So, so, the, the, exact, so the exact usage of this S4 MDG S4 table, I don't see any other purpose other than the comparison with the transaction tables, uh, right? Because that, that being a single source of truth mm -hmm. and no one is touching that data. So if anything is not working in the transaction table, uh, transaction systems, mm -hmm. so I can very well compare the data between those two systems. Other than that, is there any other purpose of this particular thing, synchronization? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, when you, when you, you have a target system, okay, so you have a target system and in the target system assume that if the data is not available then what you do you will check that uh, data in your mdg active area if it is already available in mdg active area you will re you can re-push that data to the target system again from here to here okay so once your master data created once the master data created then your mdg scope is done it is all that active record is available in my active area from here i can uh, move to the target okay. systems okay 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 got it so uh, the first replication happens at the time of the approval or activation yes after that if second time if i want to push it i can utilize this particular yeah, there are certain uh, uh, sap provided certain utility ui yeah. applications and everything where you can push the data manually or on ad hoc basis you can send that data Okay. And okay. also in case of uh, co-deployment, you will have to rely on the, I mean, uh, S4 tables only, right? Mm. No, co-deployment co deployment and all this, that is two different, you have to visualize those two topic, co-deployment and hub versus the flex and the reuse. Flex user. and reuse, yeah. right? Yeah. They are, they are yeah. Two. Flex and reuse will be the applicable for both co-deployment as well as hub. hub. So okay. don't get confused with both of them. That's exactly okay. true. Okay, I mean, you will usually that is a common. Uh, I mean, everyone try to compare that co-deployment uh, reuse versus your hub and uh, sorry co-deployment hub versus reuse and flex mode. Uh, but uh, the concept remains same whether it's a co-deployment or hub. Okay, so assume that this is your co-deployment scenario. What happens in case of co-deployment scenario? You are activating your MDG component on top of your transactional system. Of course, though it's your ERP or S4 but it's your transactional system. Here also you have the same database. You, you will get the staging table over here. If it is a reuse mode, the data will be after activation, it will be move, moved over here 
okay if it is a flex mode the active record will be stays in the same staging table you need to manually or additionally you need to configure a replication so that the data will be available in your uh, the master uh, ec activated tables now the same happens in case of your hub scenario also in hub scenario also this is your hub scenario in hub scenario this is your mdg component and you have your uh, 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 erp component okay here also you have the same data here also you'll have the staging tables okay in case of reuse mode you the data will be automatically will be moved over here but your transaction system sitting over here so you need to configure an replication to this particular system ultimately we need i need the data over here whether the data will get it uh, from other mdg system or in the same md in the same co deployment in case of co deployment i will get it uh, automatically uh, in case of reuse mode or else i will get this by a manually con by by a manual configuration so here i have a question akshay okay in case of hub deployment okay for a flex mode you would be receiving the data from mdg active area or erp i mean the so tables okay okay so this is your uh, flex this is your staging tables right so always from staging table only the active record wherever the active record sits where the final the final uh, uh, destination of your active record in case of flex mm -hmm. my the active record will be there in my staging area only so this is the source of truth to replicate the data to your target system similarly this even if it exists in the erp i mean uh, the base tables yeah, so yeah. it will be retrieved from the active area of mdg only not from the erp yes. tables yes that's true that's true Okay. So this the okay. below arrow need to be uh, it's not applicable, right? The the even the replication process this directly happens from yeah. in the in the hub one. Yeah, that is for the reuse. Okay, yes. got it. Okay. Yeah. Fine. So now we discussed about uh, what is the uh, uh, reuse mode versus uh, uh, then uh, flex mode. Okay. Now the question is. why sap introduced this flex mode okay so because for reuse mode we all know the data automatically will be moved to underlying active area and from there i'll use it but why if that is there why sap has to introduce this flex data model uh, okay so this is basically yeah any question uh, okay see theoretically yes we are trying to understand so you would be explaining about how exactly we do all these things in the, from the technical perspective yeah, in the system we'll see when we are discussing about the finance objects i will show you that one okay Flex thank mode. you okay yeah so now this is your uh, erp system and uh, mdg system okay so then what happens is uh, let's take example of finance objects why finance objects are basically built using a flex mode okay the reason why other uh, objects are built based on the reuse mode if you take the material master business partner and uh, all these uh, uh, article master em objects right those are not time dependent objects okay so whenever you activate that record that active record will have uh, 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 i mean will be moved uh, to the target system and it will use that one and after that once you change some data of that particular active record let's say for example i created a material today okay the material material description is let's say for example pump okay and this record all this material also moved to here pump material is also moved over here and uh, it to my target system also the same material description is pump okay now later after certain point maybe what happens is someone wants to change this description to Uh, let's say for example pump initial it is pump 1 okay someone change this value to pump 2 and after activation here it also it will change to pump 2 and again because of the data replication here also it got changed to 2 then you lost the original value what is the reference okay? and we don't care what is the original description also and if you open any uh, documents or any transactional documents which are actually Uh, uh uh before this change if you look at any documents okay so then what happens the material description shows it as pump 2 not pump 1 even for the old documents it's not like uh, for the before the change it will show pump 1 and after that it will show pump 2 it's not like that once you change some value that value will be applicable to that particular material master the same value referred in the older documents as well that means basically there is no time dependency or time sensitivity 
for all these objects of course you will have this in in the in in, in the form of your change documents what is the value who changed and all that stuff that is for your uh, tracking purpose but uh, at the transactional side uh, you you don't have the reference of your old description okay based on the there is no time sensitivity or probably time uh, dependent uh, all these objects your article must and all these things but when it comes to finance objects right it has the time dependency okay let's say for example i'm creating one cost center and the cost center is valid from let's say for example uh, uh, june first to uh, let's say june 30th so it has certain let me just put it in a separate one okay so i created a cost center okay and this particular cost center cost center one it has the validity so whenever you create any finance object we also need to associate some validity okay so this cost center is valid from uh, june 1st to june 30th okay after that someone actually uh, uh, after june 30th someone actually modified some attributes of this particular cost center same cost center okay so that time again you will be associating certain validity so the same cost center okay so once someone change these values that is for example july 1st to july 30th okay so if i query my later if i query this particular uh, based on the uh, if at all i wanted to look at this cost center data if i query this but search with this particular cost center one it will show me in my search screen it will show me two records one record with this particular validity which has the values at that particular instance another record which will show that the uh, between this particular duration which has the values during that instance so you need to keep all the changes and you need to store that and show that as a okay during these these many records are there with this particular different validities and during this time it has this value during this time it has this value and during the uh, uh, august it will have different value so for everything you need to associate a time stamp whenever you are time stamp in the sense of validity period so in finance of in finance terminology when i'm creating a cost any finance object i need to associate the validity period what is the validity of this particular master data object okay now the thing is that in in your uh, active area tables you don't have the flexibility to show the data something like this that's why sap stores this particular record in staging area only as a two records by adding that particular validity period okay so this is one reason another re another uh, uh, this is the first reason another reason is okay so what happens is in a, a finance of uh, uh, terminology you are setting up a new company code okay in a particular location so to set up that company code you need cost center you need profit center you need some gl account and all the all the finance objects are there these objects are interlinked okay and these objects i create and i'll assign a validity all these objects are valid from Uh, uh july let's say for example first to maybe uh december 31st or uh, 2022 okay so this is the validity period for these objects that means uh, i create i initiate the master data creation process much before but uh, though these objects are already created and activated uh, okay i don't want it to move these records as and when it get activated or approved to my active area tables or to my uh, the trans target system i wanted to hold all these master data objects okay until all these should get created in one time and after that i will uh, uh, there is a process called something called addition in finance objects we come up with something called addition addition is nothing but all the finance objects when you are creating you link it to one kind of parent one kind of addition so i'll create cost center while creating the cost center i will link that cost center to this particular edition similarly i'll create another profit center i'll link it to this particular edition similarly gl account also i limit i link it to this edition this edition will have some kind of validity okay so what happens is at the time of july 1st automatically when i release this particular edition automatically all these objects will be replicated to the target system 
So I wanted to keep my active records in my staging table only. Though those are the active records, I wanted to still store it in my staging table so that no one will use this data in my transaction. Only when I need this data to be, I, I, I need to take a call uh, at what time I wanted to make it available, this data in my uh, transactional system. So that we are controlling via this addition process. So when you release this addition, all the objects under that particular addition will be released at the same time to the, are replicated to the target systems. So the addition will have the validity period yes. later, later than July? You can create a, one addition with the July time, uh, time period and you do all these changes. After that, I will create again another addition. Under this particular addition, I'll change all these objects. And the, this validity is, let's say, for example, August to December 31st. Okay, so if I if I query this uh, my cost center, it will show me there are two records are there one record with this July time period, one record from, from August onwards. So between July to August, between this duration, it will have the validity of this edition. From August onwards, it will have the validity of the new edition. Okay, got it. Okay, hey, actually, one question over here now that. Suppose say that you have created an edition, okay, mm -hmm. and which is uh, suppose right now it is uh, existing period is till July uh, June end, mm -hmm. and you have created a edition uh, already for the period from July to December. Yes, and uh, once the edition is created, and I realize that there is a small change to be made, can I go back and edit that same edition, uh, or? I have to drop that and create a new edition. Uh, let me uh, put it over here. This is from July to December. December. There yes. is another edition from August to, to December. Yes. Okay. So this is your edition one. This is edition, edition two. two. So in the edition two, I want to make, I realize some change to be done. Mm -hmm. So can I go back and uh, edit that edition two, or I have to drop it and create a new edition. Edition two, because it has validity till December, right? So till okay. December, you can use the same edition to do the changes. No, no, no. no. My, question is, think... my question is, you have already created a edition two uh, with, uh, with the time frame of August to December. Okay. Yes. In that particular uh, changes, I, I realized some uh, some mistake has happened. I need mm -hmm. to make some corrections. Mm -hmm. So can I go back and open up the same edition, that edition two, and make the changes, or I have to cancel that edition and create a new edition? No, no, not no need to cancel that one. Okay, so basically what happens is when you try to edit a cost center, you go to the UI application and click on edit button. Then what okay. happens is you need to choose the edition. That time it will show this particular validity. See, actually uh, here one more point. What happens is once you create your edition two, right? This is from okay. August, right? So your edition validity, edition E1 validity will set to uh, uh, 30th July. Yes. There will That's be one edition at any point of time, active edition. Okay. So this validity will set it uh, till 30th July only. Okay. So yeah. now, in, in for example in september you wanted to do some changes when i go to edit option right automatically by default system takes this as a active uh, edition edition okay 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 we will see though the uh, edition uh, one is valid in the month of september it will pick up no. only e2 no? no it won't be valid till this period only Edition will not, though it is given as July to December, but your edition mm -hmm. uh, two is triggering from August. So it is mm -hmm. edition one is valid till the end of July. Automatically, your August. valid two will be set to 30th July. That means at oh. any one point of time, only one edition will be active. Yes, that's, yes. Right. that's true. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The advantage being is like, you know, we can release those editions for our cost centers or finance master data based on those dates correct like you yes. know because um when we are creating cc and we want it released in edition one it will release in between july 1st to 30th yeah and whereas yes. edition okay yeah okay so uh, these are all these are uh, concepts uh, 
especially with respect to your finance objects uh, addition addition is the only one addition, uh, difference when you compare with other masters rest all the process whatever we are learning for material or bp or anything that is applicable as is for your finance only in finance the additional topic that we wanted to learn how your master data creation process is associated with this addition concept that is the only additional difference that we need to know okay so this we will discuss when we are talking about the finance objects okay but at this point of time the important point for us uh, to uh, what we wanted to know is that basically reuse versus flex okay so now finance objects are built based on the flex mode and your other standard objects are built based on your the reuse mode concept okay so now when it comes to custom objects it's up our response it's up to us whether we wanted to uh, go with the flex or reuse mode okay so now let's say for example uh, uh, if i wanted to build a, a plant master or anything right so if there is no time dependency usually we go with the reuse mode option only okay or else if there are certain processes are there which you want uh, i'll take an a simple example where you wanted to go for a flex mode okay by default if you are creating any master data custom master data and there is no time dependency then obviously we go for a reuse mode only okay uh flex mode you only go for uh, scenarios where certain processes are actually not required on your ecc or active area tables those processes are very limited to your uh, staging area only okay i'll give you that reason uh, one scenario for that one okay so let's take for example in one of my uh, previous uh, uh, projects okay so uh, usually we create a kind of uh, suppliers okay in an organization i wanted to create a supplier or vendor okay so to create a supplier or vendor then usually sap provided this bp data bp object where I, which is built based on the reuse mode so i can create a supplier or vendors uh, in mdg using this particular uh, bp uh, model okay i can, it, it it allows me to create suppliers customers okay now the challenge here the business requirement is that before creating any customers or suppliers they wanted to do some kind of pre onboarding process okay so that means this is my s4 uh, or uh, s4 system s4 system and this is the mdg layer okay so now if at all normally if i if i go with a direct supplier creation so it, it, this is my staging table uh, user will log in and he will create a supplier and after that uh, once the activation done the supplier will get created into my active area now before this business wants to do some kind of pre onboarding process the pre onboarding process in the sense that that your current bp data model doesn't support that process either it will allow you to directly create a supplier or else uh, no supplier creation that's it but there is no pre onboarding process here so the pre onboarding process is some some organizations some organizations what happens is they wanted to first uh, send out an a request to for example procurement department or pro, for example uh, some uh, uh, any other departments uh, where they wanted to first validate that uh, can i create this uh, particular i want this particular supplier wanted to provide some services to our my department i wanted to onboard this particular supplier into the system so that i can do some transactions uh, purchases from this particular supply in that case before directly creating the supplier they wanted to for example uh, they wanted to do some pre onboarding process for that particular pre onboarding process i need to capture some basic details what is a supplier uh, for which uh, uh, cost center or which company could you want to do the some services okay what type of services he is providing so those things they will initially capture some basic information about the supplier and uh, this particular information i will uh, uh, store into kind of uh, another staging table okay and uh, on the staging record itself these departments will review the records and once only they approve that uh, particular okay this supplier this information is good so we can onboard this particular supplier in the system that is the time where the actual supplier onboarding happens okay so before creating the supplier i wanted to do some homework some pre onboarding process that too it should be in a controlled manner in a governance approach that means it is a separate custom object for me it this process is not there in your bp data model okay so it's a custom process for me 
So this particular custom process, I will actually create a custom model. I'll create a custom data model, a custom object for this process. And if you look at this one, this process will be the life cycle of this process will be ending over here only because this process will take me to a decision whether I wanted to supply, create a supplier or not. It's actually not going to create it. It's just a decision making. Like exactly. Whether you... That's true. I do some basic validations and if all the basic checks are fine, then I will actually inform the department or the actual supplier. You go ahead and uh, uh, submit a request so that the supplier set process will be. This is the this is my supplier process. This is my supplier. Just one process. thing. Sorry to interrupt here. Yeah. So when we are doing the governance process itself, okay, yeah. mm -hmm. after the request has been submitted, it goes to the respective approval process with the stewards, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. it, during that time itself, if it goes to the procurement department for a reviewer or an approver without editing that, okay, mm -hmm. that kind of a validation only will suffice the requirement, right? Why do we that's need true. a custom data model over that, here? That's true. Exactly. It's a really valid question. Okay. So the challenge yeah. here is, what happens is I don't want it to collect the supplier data, any data until I actually onboard the supplier in this process that you are talking, right? So when by supplier will enter all his supplier details, his address data, bank data, everything, but I don't want it to go with the, I don't want it to capture that information. Of course, uh, before that, I wanted to just capture that basic information without any address or bank data or anything. What goods or what uh, services he is providing just a basic information based on that one i'll take a call only when i give a go ahead then only the supplier setup will process will happen that is the time i will capture the bank data address data and everything in the process that we are talking we will capture all the address data and everything initially later i'll realize that okay this supplier is not uh, uh, required or is not a valid supplier that time if i reject that one of course, the data will be get wiped off, but still certain organizations will follow certain rules. We don't want it to collect any of his personal information until I get, I provide a, I get a go ahead from the, maybe some global team that, okay, you can onboard this supplier. In this case, what happens? So, it okay, sorry. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. So in this case, it gives me a flexibility via this custom model option. It gives me a flexibility to do the pre uh, uh, onboarding process. And only when I get a go ahead, only for those go ahead, uh, suppliers only, I will actually collect all the supplier personal data and then I will uh, set up the particular supplier process. So Akshay, this is a redundant steps, right? So yeah, yeah, first, wait, wait. it's a uh, redundant right. step. Yeah, it's a redundant step, but uh, especially in many of the organizations uh, kind of they follow these kind of approaches because when they deal with the suppliers or customers, uh, the, they will store the personal information, right? So that in, in that case, they wanted only the allowed suppliers. I wanted to get the information for non allowed so, to get those information at all. So I'm not at all interested in those information. So which means you will have two workflow uh, processes running there, right? One is yeah. for the onboarding, another is the thing. Can't this be in COP? Okay, I got it. Because in MDG, what happens if at all I have to create a supplier, right? I need to provide the basic data, address data, bank data, and everything. Or of course, bare minimum address data I need to capture. But I don't want it to capture this information until I get a clearance from my global team. Yes, but are in your standard process itself, is there no proficiency to, like if the data is rejected, mm -hmm. uh, to erase off from the staging table? Yeah, yeah, that is there. That process is there. When you reject that record, that it will wipe off uh, your uh, the record from the yeah, state. So, but so there is collect. a certain till then there is a there is a moment where you are still storing this per supplier information in my staging tables, right? So I don't that, want it to yeah, get that into is a that. temporary, right? Actually, but, but you are anyway storing the data in the other case in the custom also. You are storing the data till that rejection. Now, in the custom model, I'm not capturing any of the address data or anything, just a supplier name. And after that, the list of services he's providing and with uh, which company quotes he wants to do some business. That's it. So that so basically also along with the MDG, I mean, governance only, right? No, it, no, yeah, this is also custom model. That's why this process, this kind of process I don't have in my BP data model. That's why I build it as a custom model and what information, bare minimum information I need to collect from the supplier, those information only I will enable from this custom model. Okay. And after that, uh, when I get a go ahead from the 
procurement or global team that is the time where i'll actually onboard the supplier with all the information yeah. So basically, there will be only one staging table for that onboarding process because it will never move to active area. So it's just the decision making process. Yes, exactly. It, it, uh, it will have only one staging table where the data is always inactive. Correct. Exactly. So now you have two staging tables, one set of staging tables yeah. from a custom model, another yeah. set of staging that comes from the standard BP itself for the supplier. This is an another staging table, two set of staging tables. Are there. Okay, so initially I get the data into my custom model. And once I provide a go ahead, that is the time where the supplier data will be loaded into my stand, uh, the SAP supplier staging tables. Okay. But the data will be once you give the green signal or the reject or whatever it is based on your thing, does the data gets deleted from your custom model uh, staging table? Yeah, in the custom table, even if I store that information also, I uh, it should be still fine because the reason even if I delete and if I reject or anything, right? Here I'm not storing any personal information. Here I'm storing only base which is a safe in a safe information. May maybe probably uh, the basic information. Okay, I'm not storing any. Uh, let's say for example, the reason we introduce this process is let's say for example you the, there was a question right why can't i add a supplier as a another workflow step to do that one right so that means let's say for example the supplier got created here okay and after that it went to for for example requester created and after that it went to approver okay at approver is the place where the decision will be made now during this particular time in this particular time i, I i'm keeping that uh, supplier personal information in my staging table which I don't want it to do. I don't want it to capture any personal information. Okay. So Even because then, uh, Akshay, yeah. if it gets rejected, it is mm -hmm. going to by default gets deleted from the staging table. Right? It will it get deleted. To... At what point of time it will get deleted? This is the time. At the rejection. When I'm, yeah. When I'm capturing the information, I'm capturing the information. That means you have a time period, right? Assume that mm -hmm. it is a one day. This is one mm -hmm. day gap is there yeah. okay so this yeah. supplier i never know what kind of activities involved let's say for example is okay. doing some other activities illegal activities which are against for my organization principles and i'm storing that information anyone can come and ask that okay they don't care whether you are storing it in a temporary or ecc you captured this you are doing some business with this supplier so they i can be questionable at any point of time because of this particular one day where i'm storing the some personal information Akshay, how many approval uh, steps can have in that workflow? You can workflow have workflow can multiple. have n number of steps. There is no n number of right n yeah. number of. So yeah. you are going from department to department in the standard workflow, right? Yeah. You are, you can configure from department to department. Yes. So at the first stage itself, when you are saying that you have collected the person minimum bare minimal requirement, you can configure the workflow in such a way that. You capture the bare minimal requirement without even going for the cost center pricing and all those mm -hmm. things. At the first stage itself, someone scrutinizes that particular information and uh, then rejects it over there. Yeah, that is also there. But uh, the thing is that, uh, let's say, for example, that is a bare minimum information, but supplier can fill that uh, full information also. He can do it intentionally or unintentionally also, right? But uh, so the, it, it anyway, turns, that is use case to use case. Exactly, okay. it, 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 scenario yeah. to scenario. But there are yeah. certain organizations which wanted to don't want okay. to accept any information. Okay. They don't okay. wanted to initiate any master data creation. Now here, my supplier master data cannot creation process cannot be initiated until I get a go ahead from the global team. Okay, now uh, coming back to our topic, how it is linked to our topic, because in this case, I we went with a custom data model. The reason is I don't need this particular information in my active area at any point. What I need ultimately, I need a supplier to create the supplier in my active area. What processes I'm running in my MDG, I don't care. Supplier is the one which is important to me. So that means there are certain processes which you run in MDG and those after the processes, right? Those data or those information you don't require in your active area. Hmm. In those cases, those masters or those processes, you can still keep it in your staging area only. That's where you can create a, via a custom data model because in case of custom data model, after activation, the data won't get replicated to my downstream system or any target system automatically. Okay, so that's so, why you can actually create 
such kind of processes using i can represent using a custom data model yeah so the custom flex object model, you are using flex data model yeah yes you are using flex mode just to keep that in mdg itself and don't want yeah. to replicate to the exactly S4. in this case this particular custom data model helps me to take a decision whether i can set up a supplier or not so supplier setup is another master and this custom pre onboarding one is an another master both are two separate data models so by default the bp model uses the reuse mode yes. so you can choose the custom object to use flex mode in on the same uh, exactly. mdg uh, supply mdg yes. yes correct yeah yeah in the MD, basically in the mdg framework it uh, uh, it allows you if you look at uh, the diagram uh, let me just quickly show you the architectural diagram sorry i didn't get uh, what uh, padma just said you are saying that the reuse mode of uh, standard bp data model can be used as a flex mode huh? no no no, no. custom object standard, the custom no, object. standard standard cannot be disturbed standard what is given as is that is what i understood uh, i raised it as a question so what i mm -hmm. understood is the standard bp material everything is by default reuse which cannot be mm. disturbed if you want to mm. make it into a flex mode you have to go for a custom, uh, custom data model. Data. yeah okay got it so using this custom object framework okay i created that uh, custom yeah. data model and i used for my pre onboarding process after that i started using the standard model for creation of yeah. the supplier so it's a parallel process to your standard process what it, yeah, what yeah, it is yeah. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. true mm -hmm. Okay, so likewise, I mean, uh, the uh, again coming back to our uh, topic, flex mode is the one. Either you can go with the time dependency objects if you have any requirement where you can your custom object you can create based on the flex mode. Other option, other uh, scenario is if you are creating any master data that is not required uh, uh, to be uh, you you don't require that uh, master data that information in your transactional processes and it is only your internal within MDG process. Then also you can go for it as a custom object. Sorry, flex. So mode. same, flex mode. same is applicable for customers as well, right? We check on their credit uh, history or whatever it is. We can um, use this same custom uh, yeah, yeah. object. That's true. Right? That's true. That's true. So because here the point is, uh, 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 anyway, the standard uh, process or standard models, business, business partners or customers or suppliers doesn't support that kind of custom business specific processes. That's where we use this framework, a custom object framework to represent that entire pre onboarding process in a separate model. And you do all your governance process in that custom model. And the output of that custom data model or custom process is whether you wanted to initiate a supplier or customer creation process or not. So actually one question over here. Uh when you are using the custom object more, uh, mode, right? That is a data model, you're creating a custom data mode. mode. Yes. Yeah. So you need to say that I want to replicate it. It's not that I'm just going to create something simple, simply over there, mm -hmm. is I need to replicate to my ERP system. Yes, right? we can do, we can so, do that one as well. So, which means that I should have a similar structure on the ERP side. Right. Yes. 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 So, you so, need to have it kind of for the database tables, uh, uh, which will receive the data and uh, keep it uh, keep a copy of in your, the so, data in your. Transition. So the question is, question is, where is the origin? Should it be my? Uh, what I'm trying to say is, should I create the more uh, structure in the ERP first and just transport it into the uh s4 that is a mdg uh, s4 of the mdg or it is a separate separate you create it as a separate in the uh, s4 side as well as on the uh mdg side both are separate uh, uh, once you need to create it separately okay so this is my transactional system and this is my mdg component and this is the uh, ecc or erp layer here okay so now here you have two tables, bunch of two tables over here. Okay. Now the, the, the data to this particular tables, I need to get it from my MDG system. Okay. So I have here my staging tables. Okay. So this staging table, you will create it separately. And these staging, these, uh, these are the active tables, these active tables, we will create separately, but we will do some kind of mapping between the tables. 
so that the data from this particular table will be moved to this one and the data from here to it will move it to wow. so we do some kind of mapping in the configurations so system doesn't system doesn't have the capability to generate from say that in the transaction table i created a, a data dictionary structure and transport it to this er erp under yeah. the md yeah so that, there, that that flexibility is not there the reason is because yeah. these are the your active area tables how do we create these active area tables you go to sc11 t code and uh, we create yeah. the, these tables normal tables yeah. but in yeah. mdg i don't directly create these sc11 tables i need to create some i need to represent this in terms of a data model and once i activate the data model since it's a staging tables it will automatically get generated no what i'm trying to say is yes i i understood that what i'm saying is does uh, don't system have the capability to like translate from the erp table to a its own data model uh no so you, here always in mdg we work something called uh, this data model so always uh, in in terms of the data model i will work which automatically in the back end generates this kind of uh, tables for me okay so now here i have this active area tables which i will create it separately but the what you are saying is whatever i created over here I can't i convert into this one no that is not possible because uh, maybe technically sap could have done that one but here the point is uh, which one we take it as a reference whether you take this as a reference or you also have another erp label here so which you wanted to take this as a reference or you might be having again another uh no, transactional system which one we wanted to take that as a reference so it will create a lot of confusion right so that's why all these are in mdg always we work something called data model in terms of data model you work and finally once your changes are done you activate your model so that these staging tables will get created and uh, you create your tables required tables here 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 separately so but at the time of data replication you can configure which field of this table should map to which field of this table that mapping we can do it so the best also, practice is sorry uh, just one uh, so the what is the best practice best practice is to always create uh, in the erp to erp if you are talking about best mm -hmm. practice is to uh, do it from the transport or create separate uh, the replicate the same activity in both the system uh usually we i mean you okay erp to erp you are talking right either you yeah. can actually uh, uh move that uh, transport or the develop uh, that uh, tr into this particular system but uh, usually both are two separate uh, systems most of the time in my previous uh, projects we create those uh, separately okay see and also the reason being not uh, a dump from mdg to transaction system is every company has some kind of custom fields developed right so sap wouldn't know that how to map them right isn't it yeah that's true so, so we, we every, should have every transaction yeah. system will have its own z attributes custom attributes yeah, exactly so so we should have that key and value mapping uh, developed in our um, model within the replication isn't it yeah yeah that's true that's true so uh, in short basically we have to create those all those uh, separately uh, we cannot actually translate from one system to other system a kind of thing but uh, technically if the uh, from erp to erp if you have the transport end up there is a configuration setup between two systems maybe basis can help uh, to import those uh, objects otherwise we need to create it manually okay so yeah coming back to our reuse versus uh, uh, flex mode so flex mode is basically uh, when we take a call whether if you don't need that information in your uh, erp layer or active area or your transactional system always let's create a separate it as a create it as a flex mode because i need that for my internal mdg processes so that's where we can actually go with a flex mode reuse mode is basically you need this data uh to be available for your transactional purposes so that's where we create it as a reuse mode so that uh, the data will be uh, once the data gets created it will move to underlying erp from there you will replicate the data to the required target systems okay so now if you look at uh, this particular uh, uh, one in data model okay so we are talking about uh, the flex versus reuse mode okay so this is reuse mode you can see this particular one uh, this is a reuse mode where you have one staging table 
or uh, some group of staging tables this is your underlying erp active area tables like mara marsi once your activation uh, activation or the final approval is done the data will be moved to underlying your active area tables this is reuse mode scenario in case of flex mode scenario if you look at actually this is a one single staging area only this is where many people will get confused because sap actually provided two separate uh, db layers that's where people will think that okay there is one separate staging table to store the inactive the separate staging table to store active area uh, active records no it's not like that it is the same staging table this we can consider it as a zero record and this is a one record that's the only difference but it's a single table if you look at the latest uh, sap uh, diagrams there they represented it, it, it with a single uh, staging table only so actually how many records of the same will be there it's a one instance or is it two instances one so instance there? one record yeah so which means that the moment a record which is in the active state the moment uh, a request comes in that records indicator gets changed at what stage it gets changed like immediate the moment the request comes that stage the indicator changes to zero or yes. Yes, okay. it, it will change. Whenever if you initiate any change process, immediately the active record will turn into inactive record. Okay. And last time, uh, in the previous class, you showed the search, right? With the mm -hmm. clock and the yes. uh, the symbol, right? So mm -hmm. in the flex, in this flex mode or, or in this case, so it is showing from the active. Okay. So how it will show it over there in the case where uh, both active and the staging area is sharing the same. Uh, you, either you will have active record or either you will have inactive in record. In that case. Zero or uh, one. The, there will be no. Is it, whether it is zero or one, right? Whether yes, it is yes, approved yes, or not but, approved. No, but you you showed both the things over there, right? Okay. In the result, if you click on that yeah, so link, it will show you the yeah clock as well as the, uh, the staging. Yeah, in the uh, same record. record. Yeah. That is that is in case of your uh, reuse mode of it will work like that. In case of flex mode also, system will though it actually turn into inactive record also zero record also. From the change logs, it will pick up what is the uh, the old values. Okay, uh, and when you click the material or the actual uh, the link, it will show you that uh, the active uh, before inactive what is the original values. It will show with that one. If you click the clock symbol, it will show you the from the your zero record only. In and every, everything it, it will show that uh, highlighted changes and everything yes right? yes, okay. yes it will show that one okay? okay and again if you observe this one replication if needed that means self-replication in case of flex mode it's not a mandatory it's an optional but as a best practice we always prefer to have a self-replication so that your active area tables also get updated with that of the actual records mm -hmm. okay yeah, in case of reuse, it automatically happens. That's why there is no replication here. It automatically happens, this one. Okay. Yeah. Now, this is the same one. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's quickly uh, get into the system. And I, I'll just show you that because you all got the system access. Maybe tomorrow we will uh, discuss about, we will do some system hands on how to create those data models and everything. Uh, but uh, before that, once you log into the system, okay, always all your MDG processes, the configurations that we do under SPRO. Once you go to SPRO, okay, so you have something called over here uh, uh, cross application component. Under cross application component, you have something called processes and tools. Here there will be MDG. Where is this? Yeah, master data mm -hmm. governance. Once you once you expand this one, so there are three components are there. One is data quality, DQM. We will discuss it later. This is your MDC consolidation, but this is what your actual governance, the MDG. That whatever we are talking MDG. So this particular uh, all these topics your data model, UI process model, data quality, replication, uh, then key value, all these things we can configure under this one. Okay. This is the central governance. If you expand this one, 
you will find uh, all the relevant configurations over here okay so but actually going navigating from sprvo till here all the time it is a bit lengthy so that's why the shortcut is always mdg img <coughs> MDG IMG is the one which will directly take you to your MDG configuration always. Okay. Now here in MDG IMG, this particular uh, configuration divided into basically two parts. One is you can see here general settings. Once I expand this general setting, all the common functionalities will be covered under your general settings, like your data model, UI application, all these things, everything will be covered under general settings. Okay, so after that, you have some object specific configurations while doing some material master config. If I'm working on MM, then there are certain maybe 5% additional configurations or some touch points are there for material master. So, those MDG specific material master configurations I can find over here under this one. Okay, similarly, for customers, suppliers, business partners, there are certain default out of box content you wanted to import into this system. So those content you will are available over here uh, via your uh, BC sets. We call it as a BC set from the BC set, uh, the predefined content for BP or for supplier for customer will automatically come into this particular system. We will see all those things. Uh, but uh, here, if you look at this one, all the object specific configuration will be, uh, which is very specific to that particular object will be available under these, uh, uh, these are separate nodes, object specific nodes. Otherwise, 90% of our MDG configurations revolves around under the gender settings only. So here you have a configuration data model. Under this, we will be discussing all data model concepts, which covers, it is actually which covers all your objects, not only material or BP, it is common for all the objects. Similarly, for UI, then you have something called process modeling, where I wanted to take it out of the governance scope or within the governance scope, my workflows, my rules, my derivations, everything I, will, I can configure over here. This, this talks about your data replication. Once you expand, it has some bunch of configurations where you can you need to configure to set up the replication from MDG to the target systems or from some source system to MDG systems. Okay, so data transfer talks about how we can load the data into MDG systems. Okay, so here, first one is data model. So once you expand this particular data model, there is something called edit data model. So in data model, you can see here for MM, there is one data model for BP. There is a data model under this. This is a logical representation, the top level. Okay. Under this one, multiple configurations are there. Similarly, this is the out of box BP. Under this, you have some, it covers suppliers, customers, then now contract accounts, everything. So we need to learn all these nodes. What is the purpose of each of these nodes? Similarly for finance, you can see finance, BP, MM are the standard ones. When you get a fresh MDG system, once you activate your business functions, then automatically you will start seeing these three ones only. This is your rough light data model SAP provided for a sample one. After that, you can see there are other models are there, which is starting with Y or Z. All these are the custom data models. In this, usually you don't find these many custom data models in your project. Hard day will have one or two. This is a training system. Actually, many people actually they created their own custom data models to practice something in over here. Okay, but this covers your BP. This sorry, this covers your material master data model. This covers your BP data model. This covers your finance data model. And similarly, if at all you have AR article master, the data model name will be AR. You don't find that over here because you need to activate a separate business functions. Usually those won't be available in outside of the training systems as well. Article master or EAM. Though for EAM, the data model name is U1. Okay. So those two data models, you article master, article master, data model name is the AR and U1 is for EAM objects. Okay. So these data models, uh, we don't get it uh, outside in any training systems, whoever, uh, I mean, I haven't seen, but uh, uh, in the project, if you are working on article master or EAM objects in MDG, there you will get to see these data models. Okay. So now 
uh, in the next session tomorrow session we will discuss about all the data model concepts what is this data model what is this entity type attributes business object type all those things during that time once i cover those topics then i will show you how the staging table look like in the back end akshay is there any restriction in the naming of the uh, data yes. models like yes. like the yes. program we have either z or y right so yeah. so we have a restriction the data model name should be always uh, two character alpha numeric and uh, any custom data model always should start with y or z that's why you see here y h y p y r these are the custom oh. data models okay so let's uh, uh, how i can design a data model using reuse or what uh, uh, or flex mode so all those data model concepts will start with uh, tomorrow onwards okay any questions from anyone we majorly we discussed about flex versus reuse mode today so if you have any questions or any confusion or something like let me know so well, that was clear that was a major one. yeah before get, getting into understanding those before without understanding those concepts right so this data model uh, actually uh, uh, doesn't uh, uh, make sense for us to learn these things that is the basic concept of that flex versus reuse so once we have a clear cut idea what is flex what is reuse how the data look like in each of these things all those things then when we we tomorrow we will take one use case basically there are two use cases which we are going through this entire course one is creating our own data model so when i create our own data model that time you will understand that uh, the relationships entities all that concepts if i start explaining on the material master material master is a standard object already everything is already available so we can see it but uh, and we can uh, discuss theoretically but uh, we don't get that uh, uh, the hands on uh, experience so that's why uh, one scenario is how we can create our custom data model that one we will take one use case other scenario is Uh, how we can actually extend this the standard data models because when i'm working on mm or bp we don't use all the standard attributes as is definitely business will come up with their own needs their own requirements which is not uh, doesn't exist in the standard process so that's where we create uh, cuz we enhance the standard data models with uh, custom content okay so there are two things one is creation of our custom data model another scenario is how we can extend the standard data models if you cover this uh, if you learn these two processes that covers your entire uh, mdg okay hey akshay one basic question uh, or general question on uh, you should, theoretically speaking uh, with all this whatever we uh, understood so far mm. uh, mdg will be the first one to come uh, in a, any project right like yeah. but i have seen most of the project it comes not as part of the initial stage of the uh, project implementation it comes later uh, or maybe as a next phase uh, once a erp implementation is done so in that case already there are data which is create master data created mm. in the system via the erp transactions yes so how will you uh, link it with the later when the uh, mdg comes in place okay so that uh, we will uh, discuss under the data load uh, <coughs> uh, topic or mass processing topic so there usually what happens is we take the data and we create as is the same set of data in mdg okay so once i create let's say i have some 1 lakh uh, uh, suppliers what i will do once i set up all my mdg processes then whatever the data is there in my uh, erp is uh, our transactional system that means let me just show you here we we do the initial load right akshay yeah yeah, yeah. we uh, that part of the data migration or data load right so mm -hmm. this is what actually 90% of the projects follows the same approach whatever you mentioned exactly this is my transactional system i have my let's say 1 million of materials i have over here and now i wanted to implement mdg over here so now this is my erp layer so now ultimately all the new materials okay i'll get create from mdg process and that will be moved uh, to here 
and from here it will be moved to this one okay but before i uh, 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 i announce my go live first this 1 million of records i wanted to make it available over here okay okay so how i will do that uh, 1 million of records there are multiple processes are there which you can load the data into your erp of mdg system so okay. that we will discuss in the data load techniques so once it is done uh, loaded mm -hmm. over there mdg yeah. will grab from there automatically uh, yes once you load your 1 million of records now for example if i log into my search application and i am looking for a particular material when i click the search so the data will be scanned it will scan those records from my 1 million and if i want if i initiate an edit process that data will be loaded into my staging table so will uh, there won't be any differentiation between the non ndg created material and ndg created material right? uh, no there is no difference uh, but what happens is uh, in this uh, uh, records right let's say for example initially when you do the data load over here okay so that time you might be using with some user id system user id will be creating so the created by uh, created by will be maybe some system user let's say for example rfc uh, uh, 123 some system user yeah okay? and after that when you load that record into uh, your staging table and when you initiate some change process once you approve this record that record when when it gets loaded into again back to your active area table this time you will find the changed by name will be whatever the workflow user whatever the user who is changing over here you will find that one with that user but uh, there is yeah. no actually uh, differentiation between those things by using this created by or changed by or else uh, there are certain uh, change request numbers if there are any there are no request numbers are there then that means there is no cr created till now for this material so the the audit trail uh, cannot happen until you uh, or audit trail will not show up anything until yes. uh, uh, subsequent changes exactly. the change step is only done. when there is a change or creation that time the audit it will capture in the audit trails and it okay. will do those in audit trails if there is no change no uh, nothing right so it's the record got not changed Okay. So, so what kind of audit trail will it develop? Like, you know, in MDG, when I'm creating or changing a master data using MDG. Okay. So you, I mean, uh, let's say for example, initially you create a material. Let's say for example, uh, material will be M100 is your material number. We created this particular material. And after that, someone changed the description via different uh, uh, CR. Okay, this is CR1. In MDG, for every change will be associated with something called CR. Okay, change request. So this is a change request one. This, this is for creation process. There is again another change request two for the same material, which will actually I'm changing as part of this change request. I'm changing the description. Again, I wanted to add a new plant for this particular material. I wanted to add a new plant. Let's say plant one. Then again, I'll initiate an extension scenario using CR3. And I wanted to change some MRP area of this particular plant. This is again separate change for the same material. So I'll create again another change request. So now this particular material undergone four times changes. One is creation and three changes. So if I search with this material and if I go to the audit logs, it will show me that, okay, all the CRs and under each CR, what changes has been done. Everything will have that information. The same is available in ERP via the change documents, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's available in uh, ERP, but uh, in MDG, what happens is uh, basically you will have that uh, uh, via UIs. In e ERP, you don't have that uh, the proper UIs, right? You need to go to the table and look at RS from the GUI transaction where you need to go and see that one. It doesn't give you kind of uh, the proper uh, uh, view. Whereas in MDG, SAP developed certain uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, UI applications exclusively for this kind of uh, change uh, uh, to see the change history where you can download that data, you can do some processing in your offline Excel, you can uh, take some decisions or come to some conclusions, all that stuff. So those are actually little hand. Of course, you are right. It's already there in your uh, uh, via CD, HD or CD post tables, but MDG made it a little uh, uh, user friendly by That's developing right. specific UI applications. So, so do you think the that... governance part which is not involved in the ECC, right? Correct. 
Okay. In ECC, what happens is another difference is in ECC, uh, you will see the final change. But let's say, for example, in MDG, requester created and well, well, in, he initiated a change process. He entered the value as ABC indicator as A. And after that, approver changed the value to B. Now, if I look at that one, I can see the complete history. In, originally, this value is something X. After that, requester, there is a CR uh, exist. Under that CR, requester had uh, uh, this value A. And after that, approver changed it to B. So till that level, within that same CR also, how many users are changing at different workflow steps, all those things will be captured. But in ECC, you will have the final value, not the intermediate values. So you mean to say until the CR gets approved, whatever the levels of change it has gone, it will show, correct? Yes. That is in one change. Yes. But as you said, when the specific object has undergone with multiple CR type, CR mm -hmm. changes, sorry. Mm -hmm. So that record also, I mean, that yes. changes also would be recorded, for example, uh, one yes. uh, description change, plan change, and MRP change, something yes. like that. Yes. yes. So would that be available in your, I mean, NWBC UI screen yes. only? It will be available in NWBC UI application. We will see those are, you'll have a link called change documents. So there mm -hmm. we will see all the complete information. We'll discuss those things in the NWBC home pages. Okay. Okay. I, I just had one question before that. When you were talking about the initial data load from uh, your transactional system, whether it might be an ERP or a non-ERP to your MDG in the initial uh, MDG implementation process, right? Mm -hmm. You said that the CR is created by RFC something. Can you just mm -hmm. repeat that once? Okay. So that is basically what happens is, uh, uh, let's say, for example, in my MDG uh, system, okay, you have a staging table and uh, uh, activated tables. Okay, so initial as part of the data migration, assume that uh, maybe I used uh, some BODS uh, uh, system yeah, yeah. to trigger the IDOC, so the data directly comes to my activator. Okay, so here this records when it gets created into your ERP layer directly with by skipping your MDG processes because I wanted to load the data directly into my active area. Okay. So in this case, assume that the, the records get, you will have that created by changed by, right? So whatever the user can, with which user it, that record gets created in this particular system, that will be like, uh, it will be there in the created by username, created by. Okay. So here I have one question, Akshay. Okay. So the data is coming through BODS to ERP table, the active area of your complete MDG mm -hmm. system. Yeah. So when you are trying to search the data in MDG, so that would retrieve the data from yes. your active table, correct? Yes, yes. So okay. this so is, my this is good in case of, yeah. This, this is, is my search application. In... When I search for the record, if that it will try to look at that record if, if it is there in the staging it's not available then automatically your mdg framework will look into your uh, active area tables and uh, basically it shows the combined result of uh, uh, staging table records plus your active area records okay okay so in in the flex mode uh, the particular search will happen directly from the mdg active area isn't it uh, in flex mode, uh, yeah, MDG active area, MDG staging, whether it's a staging or active staging record. Staging or active, correct. Active record. So it doesn't go to ERP, right? Uh, it, it doesn't go to, go to it will go to, uh, it, uh, it won't go into, I need to just check on that it, one. There is a little yeah. confusion there. I was about to come there also again. Yep, so yep. if you are loading the finance data from your transactional system to your MDG system, okay, and this in case of a code deployment, okay, the mm -hmm. data will be in your uh, active table of ERP here. I mean, the underlying database table are the active tables of your uh, staging. What That's I remember, what... Uh, okay, so in, in case of uh, uh, finance data model, okay, you need to load in other data models like your MM, the basically MM, BP, or uh, article master, or uh, yeah. you know, EAM, okay? So which uses this reuse mode, it automatically always looks into your active area by default when you search mm. your application, okay? But yeah, in case yeah. of in case of OG or uh, flex mode, right? Flex mode, 
okay or for example finance data model your active records also available here only in this particular database so it will always look into your the staging tables for active and inactive records okay now that's the reason uh, in case of finance initial data migration it has to happen from your mdg layer Okay. Sorry, I just missed. Can you just repeat the last statement? Okay, so here the data migration can happen directly to your active area, right? Uh, via BODS. Mm -hmm. Okay, in case of reuse mode, because yes. there is no uh, my search application always looks into my active area also. So then I can yes. directly load the data into my this one. But in case yes. of a flex data model or finance data model, especially finance data model, all those records, you there are all those records has to be loaded into your MDG area uh, only. Okay, let me uh, explain uh, again one more time. Okay, so in case of when you are loading the data, there are two options are there. Okay, so this is your MDG layer, this is your active area layer. Okay, MDG. Actually, this is this comes under our data loading uh, the topic. But since you have some confusion, let me clarify that one. Okay. So when I'm okay. loading the data, let's say, for example, reuse data, I have two options. Okay. So this is my maybe some third party system or some BODS or any system. I can load the data this approach. Okay. That means all the records I can load into my MDG layer from there. Uh, once those records uh, via mass processes, and once the records are approved, then I can push the data to over here. Okay, so this this is uh, this is one way. Other way is I can directly load the data into my active area. What is the difference between these two things? If I load it from MDG process, all those records will go via your governance approach that CR you CR process, a CR yeah. process, and everything, and CRs has to be approved, and all that. It will take a couple of times. It's not a far, far a quicker one. But if I load the data directly into my ERP, it's a quicker one. So that's why many of the people always prefer to load the data initially by skipping your MDG layer. So this flexibility I have in my reuse case because my search application can look into the data from both staging from active area. So that's why even if I load the data directly into my active area, so I don't see any issue in my search applications. But if but, but Akshay, in reuse mode, once the data gets approved, even though it is going, whether you use directly loading the to ERP or via MDG, mm. once the data gets approved, the, mm. the data will be removed from your staging tables in MDG, right? So yeah. when you're doing the search criteria, mm. it will only look for the inactive data. When it has to look for the active data, it has to by default go to ERP tables, isn't it? That's true. See, when I'm, well, let's say, for example, I search with uh, uh, all the materials with the uh, material type of uh, FERT, all finished products I wanted to search. So uh, in this one, there might be some records in staging area, which are undergoing for some changes. And there might be some records without any change request. Those are only in active area. So I need to get all those records and club and show you on the my results screen. So it's only searching for the inactive records from MDG. Okay. I got it. Yeah. yeah. From the staging table, it will look for the inactive records. From the active area, it will look for the active records. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is clear, right? Now, when it comes to finance data, flex uh, uh, finance data model, OG, which uses a flex data model. Okay. In that case, the problem is if I directly load this particular data into active area, my search application don't find the records. There is no mm -hmm. record because it always looks into this staging area for active and inactive records. That's why in case of finance data model, when you are doing data migration activity, it has to always follow this approach. First, you that need to load MDG into to ERP, MDG. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, uh, uh, this is via separate replication process, additional replication process. This is. Okay. So I need to have my active records in my staging table for this one. So that's why it's a mandatory always for the finance. It has to go with the governance approach or uh, the, uh, into your uh, uh, MDG layer. For reuse, it's not required. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Akshay. Okay. okay. So the so the search will be faster in the flex mode. Search uh, not uh, like that. Uh, uh, okay, faster in the sense because you you are saying in the context that both are available in the same table, so it will be faster. Yeah. And also. 
yeah yeah and that's also true. in erp other tables are available too right so in md for example if we take finance module og um mm. the faster uh, the search will be much faster compared to the other uh, data models i'm, yeah. I'm just guessing yeah we can say but uh, we don't actually find that much of difference because when you're uh, uh, it's in the same system uh, uh, right uh, yeah one way mm -hmm. you are staging tables uh, of uh, searching all the records in one table or uh, uh, one layer basically staging layer uh, that will be faster but for bp and uh, it it's not basically a kind of a major uh, uh, a point to consider uh, because both are in the same system okay i'm just like you know asking like you know whatever comes yeah, to mind to that one but uh, technically that is true whatever you were uh, uh, understanding that is true technically yeah okay thank you okay any questions okay thank you all let's catch up tomorrow yeah thank you thank akshay you so for much. your time you. actually yeah. the last discussion on flex and reuse mode helped a lot to understand much better the concept wise Great. thank you very much for thank accommodating you. bye bye have a good night thank you all bye bye thank you thank you for attending the session i hope you all enjoyed it don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below, and we will reply to them at the earliest.